In this short demo, we're going to take a look at network address translation. We have this user right here who's on the 10 network, and we're going to translate that IP address into something as that traffic goes in through our 2ZFA00 and out to the rest of the network. So on R2, we're going to do all the magic. We're going to identify who may be translated. We'll do that with an access list. We'll create ACL number one that will identify anybody on the 10 network space can be translated. And we can translate them to either this interface right here, the outside interface of R2, or to an IP address in the 23 range. Let's go ahead and use the outside interface. So from a NAT perspective, this is going to be the in interface, and this is going to be the out interface, just like that. So let's jump on R2, and we'll configure NAT, and then we'll verify that it works. Okay, on R2, let's go ahead and set up our, let's see if we have any NAT in, in place. We'll do a show run include NAT, see if there's any NAT statements anywhere in the config. And there aren't. Okay, so it sounds great. We'll also do a show access list just to make sure that there's no current access list in place. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create an access list that identifies the traffic that may be translated. So we'll just go into configuration mode. We'll say access list one permit and we'll say because um, the standard access list is IP and we're looking at source addresses let's say anybody on the 10 network so if your first three octets start 10 0 0 you are a match the last octet we don't care about if we do do show access list that'll confirm what we just configured so anybody with on the 10 network is going to be matched by this access list now we're not applying this access list to any interface, we're simply going to use it as part of our network address translation rule. So let's create the rule, we'll say IP NAT inside source list, and we'll say list number one, which is what we just created, and we'll say you can be translated into the IP address on the interface FA0 slash 1, and we want to do overloading. What that says in a nutshell is that anybody who is matching the access list of one and their traffic happens to be coming through R2, they're going to be translated to the outside interface of R2, which is FA0 slash 1. Let's take a look at that diagram real quick. So one last piece we need to do is we need to tell the router that this interface right here is the NAT outside interface and this interface here is the inside interface. See, other, otherwise, the router really doesn't have a good idea of what the inside or outside is until we tell it, in this case, from a NAT perspective. So let's go to um, interface config for FA0 slash 0. Say IP NAT inside. And when you apply NAT for the first time to an interface, it's going to pause for a few seconds on real gear, and it's going to actually in, uh, invoke the whole NAT logic and then we can go to interface FA0 slash 1 and say IP NAT outside and it's a lot faster because once NAT is enabled on at least one interface it doesn't have to do that whole higgity jig again so now it's in place let's take a look how do we verify this show IP NAT and I should say translations okay so there's no translations in place because no traffic has gone through let's send traffic through from this host right here at 10 0, 0, 15. So here's that PC and it's actually an emulated PC but it's at that IP address and let's do a ping to 3.3.3.3 now 3.3.3.3 is R3's loopback address we could also do a ping to um, 23.0.0.3 is still going to R3's direction now once we do that if we go back and take a look at this here's the translations that we have in place those are for the pings that we just did so we ping to 3.3.3.3 and we also ping to 23.0.0.3 uh, and this is the translation record now those will time out if we do a show IP translations eventually those will time out we can do a clear and we can say I want to clear all of them and then we do a show again and they're gone another test we can do is this we can telnet from R1 over to R3 
that will also go through R2, through its in ingress on its inside interface for NAT and outbound on FA01, and that also should generate uh, NAT translation. We could also do a debug right here. Let's do a debug IP NAT, and we'll say, let's leave it on the basic IP. Uh, let's do the, now let's see what comes up with that. That'll be great. And then we'll go to R1, and we'll do a telnet to 3.3.3.3, which is going through R2. That's working. We'll do a show tech support to, to generate some traffic. And let's go back and take a look at R2. So there's our debug of the step-by-step. -step. We'll do an undebug all to turn that off. And there might be some residual stuff coming up because I turned on debugging. So it's showing us all the net, network address translation activity that's happening. And now that that has stopped, we'll do a show IP NAT translations. And there's our translation. Notice now it's translating on the inside local address of 10.0.0.1. A source port of that is going to the outside IP address of 3.3.3.3 to the destination port of 23. We can also verify that this port indeed is the one we sourced it from with Telnet by going back to R1 and doing a show control plane host open ports and we should have an open port for that session and there it is right there 25692 equals the one right here so just nothing magic there just lining up all the dots to make sure you see exactly where they fit so that's network address translation really really simple as a review what are the commands show run interface let's do a show run interface uh, fa0 slash 0 and show run interface FA0 slash 1. So we did IP NAT inside on the inside interface. We did IP NAT outside on the outside interface. And if we do a show run, and I'll simply uh, say, I want to start with the keyword source. There we go. I scroll up a little bit. And we added this one statement right here. IP NAT inside source, list number one. Go ahead and pat them over to the outside interface of FA0 slash 1 and overload means go ahead and load it up. We can get theoretically over 64,000 connections off that one IP address. Whether that's really true or not, that's another discussion. But there's certainly, we can get thousands and thousands on that one IP address. And that's it. IP NAT and Cisco iOS. Thanks for watching everybody.